Hallelujah. Let's uh, commit ourselves before the Lord as we listen to His Word this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we, our Father in Heaven, we come to Your throne of grace asking for Your presence to be in our midst. We pray for Your wisdom and guidance as we study Your Word. May Your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts this morning. May this message of Yours bring blessings to everyone who listens as your anointing flows to your servant down to every individual person who, are who is listening right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 So let me share the slide here. So happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. And I believe God has a message for us this morning. Amen. Okay, so are you ready to listen to the word of God this morning? Can you please tell to the, to the person next to you and say, I am glad that you are here. Amen. We are so glad that you are here this morning. And if you have your Bible with you, can you please open the page of your Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 8. It says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. Which you, have which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I receive I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Verse 5, And that he preached to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of, of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he, he appeared to James, then to the to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Our message this morning is about, I entitled it, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. There is no greater joy than seeing a risen Lord. Are you excited this morning when you wake up? Are you excited to celebrate the risen Lord? You know what? His appearance creates a great impact on people's lives. Christ's resurrection is the very foundation of Christian faith. There is no faith-based religion in the world that can be compared to having faith in Jesus. Because every founder of its religion in the world remains dead. Only Jesus rose from the grave and lives forever. Jesus has begun this faith in each individual. His death, burial, and resurrection has become the most significant in the Bible. He died for our sins. He was buried and has risen on the third day. This gospel, this is the gospel I proclaim to you according to the writing of the Apostle Paul. If you celebrate Christmas, how many among us here celebrated Christmas? We celebrate Christmas, right? We should celebrate Christmas because it is the birth of our Savior. But most of the time, we should celebrate the resurrection more than we celebrate Christmas. Because this day is the foundation of our faith in which the Savior that we believe in and the Lord that we serve as a Christian, the one we put our hope. The one what, that we put our hope in has risen 2,000 years ago. 
the finality of his mission on earth is to die and to be raised from the dead. Our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ has risen and lives forevermore. So today we will be learning how we can see the risen Lord as he reveals himself to us in a biblical perspective. How many wants to see the Lord? Can you say this to the person next to you? Do you want to see the Lord? Or maybe a question that you can say, have you seen the risen Christ? His, because his resurrection was the main topic on every street corner, in every home during that time. People were asking one another about the risen Messiah. If you live during that day, you can hear two questions roaming around the city. The question of asking, have you seen the Lord? While others say, I've seen the Lord. People who have seen the Lord or experienced the risen Christ have this in common. Number one is they have, they have life changed. Their life was changed or have changed. If you will be given a chance to see the Lord Jesus, would you pick to see the one who's lying in the grave or the risen one? The risen Christ is a life changer. You know what? Many people who claim to have faith in Christ never experience changes in their life. Why? Because the one they worship is still dead. They are still worshiping a version of Jesus made of human hands. A God that cannot move. Small g. A God that cannot move. Can't breathe. Can't talk. Even can save itself. Stop worshiping idols that can't save you. Because Jesus has already risen from the grave 2,000 years ago and is living forevermore. His resurrection brought change to every life to bring to everything connected to him. If death has changed everything as the result of sin, the resurrection of Jesus reverses all those changes to the plan of God since the beginning of all things. At the moment Jesus stepped out of the tomb and revealed himself to many, their lives were changed. Jesus reveals himself to those he wants to. And when this happens, that person will never be the same again. Do you have the desire for Jesus to reveal himself to you? What you need today is to encounter the risen Christ. If you want your life to be changed in the way God has designed for you to be, you need Jesus. You need to experience him and the power of his resurrection. You will only become a true believer of Christ when you experience him in your life. And the result of that is a changed life. God will only reveal himself to anyone he wants to. But if you have the desire to see him, he will reveal himself to you. It is so important to see the Lord as you encounter him in your life. Only the reason Christ can make a difference in our lives. He can change us. From sinners to righteous. From defeat to victory. From death to life. Your real first encounter with the risen Christ will change you for the rest of your life. According to 2 Corinthians 5.15 tells us, Jesus died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. With the same encounter, according to our text, he encountered uh, Cephas, or who is called Peter, was he was transformed with that encounter with the Lord Jesus, with the risen Christ by the beach. His faith was restored and he became the leader of the Christian faith. 
the disciples who were who are called the twelve filled with doubt became the apostles and bold in their faith there were more than 500 brothers and sisters who became his true followers one of his half brother james who doubted him became his follower and a pastor in jerusalem and the one who wrote this book of corinthians which is Saul, who was the persecutor of the church, became the Apostle Paul who proclaimed the good news to the Gentiles and wrote many epistles that we read today. All these people's lives have been changed when they encountered the resurrected Christ. They lived no longer for themselves but for Christ. And these changes impacted many lives from generation to generation up to this time. So I encourage you, give yourself to Jesus and he will give you a new life. A life that God has prepared for you to live for him. In the following uh, verse in this chapter, it says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. If you, who, who is listening right now, belongs to Christ, you are a new person. Say this to the person next to you. If you belong to Christ already, say this to the person next to you. I am a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. So everything that we do from now on become meaningful because Jesus lives. Amen. The second experience that those people uh, uh, have is their faith were uh, perfected. The second result of exposing to the risen Christ is having faith complete. The resurrection of Jesus has made our faith perfect. If Jesus has not been raised from the dead, your faith is useless. We encounter when we encounter the risen Christ, he makes our faith complete. You know what? There is nothing or no one can make our faith perfect rather than the risen Christ who started it. His resurrection made the gospel we preach and our life complete. Dying on the cross without resurrection is an incomplete gospel. If Jesus did not raise or rise from the dead, we are no different from any other religion and we are still in sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 17, and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. The word futile is, uh, in other translation, it is, says useless. Useless. But his resurrection is the proof that our faith in him, in Jesus, is not useless. That our sin has been forgiven. Guilt and shame because of sin is found no more in those who are in Christ Jesus. When he was crucified, our sins were nailed with him. When he died, he took our guilt and shame with him. And when he was raised to life, he gave us a new life like his. But even though Jesus has already risen from the dead, many people still want to put him to death by denying his resurrection. While we so-called Christians are doing the same. So how does a person crucify Jesus again? When a person who experiences Jesus keeps on sinning. In Hebrew chapter 6, verse 4 to 6, these people, the, the Bible says, the, the, the one who wrote this, the book of Hebrew tells us that it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened 
who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. You know what? It is easy to win an unbeliever than to help someone who already knew the way of God and yet chose to live ungodly life to turn back to their faith. When a believer keeps on sinning, he is taking back the shame that Jesus took on the cross when he died for our sin and rose from the dead and putting him to public disgrace. Aside from the aside from uh, the the aside from that, more than 500 witnesses that time. There were there were soldiers who guarded the tomb and witnessed the resurrection, but they chose to turn themselves into false witnesses upon receiving bribe from the high priest. No one can deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every incident that happened to Jesus was according to the scriptures. We believe that Jesus has risen as it is written in the scripture. Even the history itself back it up. Christ impacted even our time from BC to AD. Those who question the Bible about the resurrection of Jesus, listen to this. His birth was foretold. His death was foretold. His burial was foretold. And even his resurrection was foretold and confirmed by himself, by Jesus himself. Jesus said when he cleared the temple during his time in this earth, and this group of religious people questioned his authority, and Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. So everything happened to Jesus was recorded in the Bible. Don't listen to those who doubt and question the word of God. Rather, believe in God and his words. When Jesus rose from the grave, he overcame death, which is the power of sin. His death on the cross overpowered sin. And the last enemy to be destroyed or he destroyed is death. Because Jesus conquered sin, which is the root. Its power, which is death, became powerless. Little by little, death cannot hold him. And <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and on the third day, it gave up on him. You cannot put back to death a person whom death has given up on. Death cannot hold on hold Jesus from the grave. The tomb was empty. The resurrection is real. Jesus has been raised from the dead. So how was the faith of those who encountered Jesus made complete? Christian faith is complete or perfected because death has no power over us anymore. Amen. A complete life is a life that never ends. How many wants a complete life? A perfect life. A perfected life. If you have a perfected life, your life will never end. Our faith was made complete because our Savior is alive and has brought us eternal life. And those who worship other gods, you know what? Those who worship other gods will die and will remain dead like their gods. But those who put their trust in Jesus will never die. And even if they die, they will live again, according to him. When he rose uh, Lazarus from the dead, Mary questioned him about what happened. But Jesus answered her, answered her. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. My dear friends who are listening right now, do you believe in this? Do you believe this? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. How many among us are afraid to die? Jesus said he is the resurrection and the life. He who believes in him, though he may die physically, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in him, in Jesus, will never die. When you believe in Jesus, there's a chance that you will experience physical death. But when he comes back and you are still alive, you will never experience death anymore. Even though we, we die physically, Jesus will raise us up when he comes back. And when, and, and, and we will have eternal life with him. So the third experience that happens to those who have seen the risen Christ is they become witnesses. They become witnesses. They become a witness empowered by him. So who was the first witness of the risen Christ? Not Peter, nor John, but a woman named Mary Magdalene. When, when Mary, when, when Jesus revealed himself to Mary, he, she didn't recognize the risen Christ until the Lord called her name, called her by name. And Jesus told her, he said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I, have, I am ascending to my father, your father, and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. In their culture as Jews, women are not allowed to preach to men. But her message was empowered by the joy and amazement of her encounter with the risen Christ. No matter who we are, God can empower us to deliver his message to others. It is not only the duty of the pastor, but every believer to tell others about the risen Christ. And that power that uh, is, 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 and that power is when we encounter Jesus in our life. So here in this passage, it is a reminder to each one of us who believe in Jesus, who wants to see the Lord. Like Mary Magdalene, she never stopped asking the body. Oh, I'm sorry. He, she never stopped seeking the body of Jesus until Jesus revealed himself to her. So we should not stop seeking the Lord. We should not stop seeking the Lord Jesus until he reveals himself to us. Matthew 7 reminded us that if we seek, we will find. Amen? The one who seeks, finds. That's a promise of the Lord Jesus. That this is not only applicable to prayer, but if we seek the Lord daily, we will find him. So how can we see the Lord? How can we see Jesus, the risen Christ? Seek him through reading, meditation of the word of God, and in prayer. So look for where Jesus may be found. When Mary was, and the other uh, women, during that day, very early in the morning, they woke up very early in the morning, prepared the perfume for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when they found out, on their way, they have this, this problem that, who, will, who is going to roll the stone? Because the, the cave or the, the tomb is made out like a cave. And there's a big, huge uh, stone that was rolled. Uh, and no one can, can open it or roll it. But 
their problems become more, uh, bigger than they, they thought because when they saw the tomb, it was open. So they, they went in, but Jesus' body was not there anymore. So they were alarmed but what they witnessed. You know what? Where, if you want to see Jesus, look for where Jesus may be found. So Mary and the other Marys, including the mother of Jesus, went to the disciples and told what happened. So Peter and John went to the place and checked the tomb and saw that everything that the women told them was true. The body of Jesus was not there anymore. But there's a person who never stopped seeking the Lord, which is Mary Magdalene. He went back to the place where they laid the body of the Lord Jesus. Keep searching and seeking. Maybe the gardener took him. And when Jesus appeared to, he, to her, Mary Magdalene thought it was the gardener. And she asked, if you have hidden my, my, my Lord, you can tell me where he is. But he, she never thought that was Jesus himself. So Jesus is the word. When you read his word, when you read the Bible, you will see him. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, the Father in heaven. And when you call upon his name in prayer, you find him. So Mary Magdalene has a message with her to tell the disciples. What is her message? She has seen the Lord. That's the first message. She has seen the Lord. Secondly, Jesus will be ascending to heaven to God the Father. Every believer is called to witness the risen Christ. Before Jesus was ascended to heaven, he appointed his disciples to be his witnesses to others. Compare the eyewitnesses to us who never seen Jesus in person. We can also be, with, be his witnesses. We rely on what the scripture says. We who have never seen Jesus face to face are no lesser witness than those eyewitnesses. As a matter of fact, we, were, we are more blessed than them according to Jesus' own word. When one of the disciples named Thomas haven't experienced the risen Christ compared to the other disciples who have seen the Lord. He has this in his mind that he said, unless I, 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 I see the hole in his hands or in, on, even on, on his side, I will believe. So he, this is a kind of believer who is to see is to believe. But when Jesus showed himself, revealed himself to them once again, Thomas was present. You know what this passage reminded us? That some Christians are neglecting gathering together. They will attend the church when they want to attend. And like Thomas, when Jesus first appeared to them, he, was, he wasn't there. We don't know where he was. But the Bible says at the time that Jesus once again revealed himself, Thomas was, Thomas was present. The doubtful Thomas was there. And he was amazed when he saw the risen Christ. He said, Jesus, he said to Jesus, my Lord and my God, you know, finally believe that Jesus is true, that he is risen from the dead, that the disciples' message, even Mary's message was true, that Jesus risen from the dead. Then Jesus told him 
because you have seen me, you have believed. And blessed, he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Becoming a witness is part of being a Christian. Don't make an excuse for yourself. That this, this is just the job of those who are being called as a minister or a pastor or evangelist or a prophet or being an apostle. Let me remind you this calling to become a witness is for every believer. Every believer has, a, has the great commission to follow. Jesus commanded the early disciples. He said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we who have seen the recent Christ, or we can say we who, we who experience the power of his resurrection, who are saved, have a story to tell. Amen. How many among here wants to tell or love to tell a story? Do you love uh, to tell a story? How many are storytellers this morning? We have a story to tell. Amen. The story of the risen Christ. And those who believe in our message become, becomes part of us to do the same to others. The disciples receive one instruction on how to witness. And that is through the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them. And they will become his witnesses in Jerusalem and all in Judea and Samaria and all and to the ends of the earth. Obeying Jesus will lead us to become more effective witnesses. How many wants to become more effective in witnessing, in telling the story of Jesus Christ, of, in telling others about his recent experience? So this is the things that we need to remind ourselves. When we obey Jesus, he will lead us to become more effective in witnessing. First, he will empower us. He will empower us. When the Holy Spirit comes on us, the power of evangelizing will begin. Of being witness, of being becoming a witness will begin. So ask the Lord Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit so that you will receive power from the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, don't be blinded by the, by the world or by the schemes of Satan that we will not just we will not. Uh, we will just hanging around and doing the things of the world, but we forget the most important thing. That is to become witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to tell others, and in order to do that, is we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you have this desire to witness to others but you are shy, you don't know what to do. Let me say this once again. You need power from the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you so that you will become more effective in witnessing. Secondly, Jesus appoint us to people, specific people, from our home to our neighbors, relatives, and even to other places. So like Mary Magdalene as a witness, we have a message to tell others. 
number one that we should tell others is this. If you experience Jesus in your life, you have a story to tell. Number one, tell others how he revealed himself to you. So tell your experience to others how Jesus, the risen Christ, has revealed himself to you. Secondly, is how he changed your life. How he changed your life. Like those people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, this early, we can say early church saints from Peter together with all the apostles those more than 500 people brothers and sisters and Paul the apostle Paul formerly persecutor of the church they were all changed because of their encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ if you truly encounter Jesus in your life there's change in your life there's changes in your life happening right now so tell others how God, how the Lord Jesus, how the risen Christ changed your life. And thirdly, how he made your faith perfect or complete. Amen. Tell them what the Lord Jesus Christ did. His resurrection made our, our faith complete because that has no hold on, on us anymore. He, that has no power on us, over us anymore. And this means our faith is made complete. Amen. So second thing that we need to tell others is, first is what we experience with Jesus. Second is his plan. His plan. When Mary made the disciples, he she told them that I have seen the Lord. And the second message that, he, that, that she told them is this. The Lord wants you to know about his plan. Unlike the message that Mary Magdalene told the disciples about Jesus' plan of going to the Father in heaven, the message that we tell others is the opposite of that. The opposite of that. And what is that? His return. His return. We tell others about Jesus coming back. God has one plan for every individual believer that hasn't happened yet. And that is to take us home. Say this to the person next to you. Are you ready to go home? When Jesus Christ appears once again, he is going to take us home. Don't be like Mrs. Lot, the wife of Lot, who, who is, uh, the Bible says, she is not ready for her salvation. She never believed on what the angel told them that they should not look back. It is more important to her the things that she accomplished in this world rather than the salvation that awaits for her. That's why she turned back. She looked back and she turned to a pillar of salt. So God has a plan. He has one plan for every individual believer that hasn't happened yet. And that is the rapture. His coming to take us home. Jesus coming, second coming to take us home. The hope that we are waiting for. Are you waiting for the Lord's coming? Are you ready to, for him to take us home? So we tell others that Jesus is coming back again. Amen. That our life here on earth is temporary. 
that even when you die, he is going to raise you up and take you home. Jesus is no longer here on earth. He is in heaven. And we will be, and, we'll, and, and he will come back for us. When he come, when, when he come back for us, he, he will, he's going to take us with him to heaven. Okay, this promise is not for everyone. This promise is only for those who believe in him. Let me, re let me repeat that and tell you once again, he is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. And will be coming back soon to take with him to heaven those who believe in him. And lastly, his plan of resurrection. He will raise us up. Amen. He will raise up those who died for him. So don't worry about those believers who died before us or those Believers who pass away, who put their trust in Jesus. Amen. Jesus will raise them up when he comes back. He will change their bodies together with those who are still alive, waiting on his coming with the same body like his resurrected body. So like Jesus, we will experience a resurrected body. Amen. Amen. No more pain, no more ache or, or, or illnesses. No more death, no more sin. Like Jesus, we will experience a resurrected body, a body that sin and death have no power against it. As a conclusion, the last text that I want to remind us is in this chapter, in verse 54 tells us, then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. But thank God. Can you say this with me? But thank God. He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So to conclude uh, this message, I encourage you to spend most of your time every day to seek the Lord through his word and in prayer until he fully reveals himself to you. As we wait upon the Lord, we will see him getting clearer and clearer day by day until we see him face to face i challenge you may this may this message challenges or challenge us to seek the lord until you conclude to your uh, conclude in uh, your life and tell others i have seen the lord amen let's all pray hallelujah Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for your love for us. Father, thank you for sending the Lord Jesus to die on the cross and raising him up on the third day. May we continue to experience the power of his resurrection, to die to our sin and, we, and, and have a, a new life that leads to eternity. The risen Christ reminds us a new of the new life that you have prepared for us since the beginning. May this message that we have heard bring us hope. Hope in every situation we may have right now. It may look dead to us, but you can bring it to light. May we experience your plan for us to see our risen Lord and be with you forever. In your son's name, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.